Hi, I'm Ben Giddy Baker, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble our scarf joint miter box kit. This tool allows you to cut perfect scarf joints for your cigar box guitar necks using only hand tools. Let's get going. Begin by laying out your parts and verifying that your kit came with all of the required components. There are side panels, base panels, the top panel, and the depth stop. There will also be screws. Begin by taking the base plate. This is the one with the series of rectangular holes and on the bottom side you will see holes with the countersinking circles around them. Begin with this piece with the countersinking circle side down. Next, take the, your middle piece of the base, line up the hanging holes, and place it over the base. Now it is time to begin inserting the side panel pieces into your base. Begin by finding the two side panel pieces that have the countersinking holes. These will be facing outward when mounted into the base with the angled slot pointed towards the mounting hole. These go outermost when being inserted into the base plate. Next, take the two side panel pieces that have no tabs on the top and the bottom. These are the middle pieces. Again, make sure that your slot is pointing towards the hanging hole and matching up with the outer pieces already placed. Finally, insert the inside side pieces. Once again, lining up your slot pointed towards the mounting hole. At this point, verify that you can see through the slots that everything is correctly mounted and that your countersinking holes are facing outward on your side panels. Now take your top plate and prepare to insert it onto the base. The top plate comes in two pieces with branding marking the hanging hole, and also the countersinking circles visible. No countersinking circles or branding on the bottom side. Line up the hanging hole, which is the smaller piece, and slide that into place on your base. Take the longer piece and slide that into place. You should end up with this notch. There's a notch here that should come and line up with the end, the bottom end of the saw slot. At this point, it's time to begin inserting screws. Begin inserting your screws through all of the holes in the base plate. There are 14 screws to be inserted. You can use a hand screwdriver for this or a power screwdriver if you have one. Make sure you use a fine tip bit. A number one bit is recommended. And if you've got a power driver, don't overdrive them down into the holes. You want them to just be flush with the surface of the plywood. The countersinking rings here will allow the screw head to go down until it is flat against the surface. 
We'll go ahead and insert these screws now. Once you have all 14 screws inserted into the base plate pieces, it's time to begin screwing together the side panels. There are six screws to go into each side panel. However, as currently inserted, only three of the holes along the top of each panel are visible. Begin by inserting the three screws along the top edge of each panel with the pieces inserted into the base. Try to squeeze the side panels together as you're inserting the screws to make sure you have a snug fit. Once the top screws are inserted, pull the side panels out of the base. Now we insert the bottom row of screws, making sure to get the screw head at least flush or slightly countersunk beneath the surface so that it will insert back into the slot. To test your fit, reinsert into the base plate. If your screw heads prevent the side panels from inserting into the base, pull it back out and get the screws in there a little bit further to allow it to go into place. When reinserting the side panels into the base, make sure that the slot still ends in the cutting gap. Now, take your top panel with the countersinking rings facing upwards and fit it on to the tabs of the side panels. Then insert the screws. Now, Turn the miter box over, exposing the four holes with the countersinking rings that are facing downwards on what is the bottom plate. Insert four screws, one into each hole. Be careful to get these screw heads flush or slightly countersunk beneath the surface of the wood so the jig will sit flat when in use. Finally, take the depth stop and insert it into its position at one end. If the fit is a little too snug, use some sandpaper to thin down the end pegs so that it fits snugly but not too tight to get back out. Your scarf joint miter jig is now complete. <music> scarf joint miter jig, you will need a thin flush cut saw with a narrow kerf. The narrower the better. It is also recommended that you clamp the miter box to a bench top or mount it to a larger board that can be clamped down for stability while sawing. You can choose whether to use the depth stop. Using the depth stop will yield a headstock on your neck that is roughly five and a quarter inches long, which is great for cigar box guitars. If you want a longer headstock or some sort of different arrangement, you can remove the depth stop and make the cut wherever you wish. I'm going to proceed with the depth stop in place. So I'll use a squeeze clamp to mount this end of the miter to my bench top. And then I will insert my neck. These miter boxes are made for necks exactly one and a half inches wide. If your neck is one and a half inches wide, you should have a nice snug fit with no moving around. If you're using a narrower neck, you might want to use shims to hold it in place while sawing. I will then take my second clamp and clamp down neck and all so that everything is held nice and snug. Then taking my thin kerf flush cut saw, I begin sawing into the slot. When sawing, do your best to move your arm exactly horizontal. 
not pulling up on the saw or pushing down, which will cause the teeth to cut into the walls of the slot more quickly. Line it up and begin cutting into the neck. You should be able to feel when the saw has gone all the way through the neck and begins to cut into the bottom of the slot. Try not to cut that slot too deep as this will weaken the overall jig. It should take about 30 seconds to a minute of gentle, steady sawing to cut through most woods, although harder woods will of course take a little bit longer. Remove your saw, undo your clamp, pull the neck piece, Remove the other clamp, remove your top piece, remove any lingering dust, and you will see that you have a perfect miter joint cut. You then put these two pieces back together so that the joint line is about halfway up the headstock, and you can see just by holding these pieces together without any sanding that you've got a nice tight scarf joint line that with a little gentle touch up sanding with probably 220 grit sandpaper should clamp up to make a nice tight great looking joint. The perfect scarf joint cut by hand. Thank you.